Mercedes and Travis' bed all bumped out. <laughs> Belly up. Hey guys, going live in the living room. So we have a little shadow, little hand puppets we can make in here. Trying to see if I can make it better. It's not as bad, but hopefully y'all can see the book. This is just happens to be one of my cardiology pages with some notes in it. Didn't really need it for the exam. Um, but just writing out some of the examples. I wrote out um, how to do an established cardiac patient if it was based off time. And then I did a cardiac patient based off MDM. So just two different examples. Then wrote some common medicine codes that might be affected in here and then some hip picks codes here too that might be in this section before I start coding it. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, you go away. Why does that have to go there? I don't need that on there. There we go. I have um, my page of what was on the most recent CPC exams. As far as vocabulary terms and things up, we can go over, let's see. Where did it go? Exam A. There we go. It's 26 pages now. Goodness. So definitely what you need to know about um, the top 10 ICD-10 guidelines for the CPC exam are things like multiple guidelines. How do you code when you have multiple guidelines mixed together for injury in HIV, for example, or like injury, HIV, and pregnancy? Which codes go first when you're diagnosing something like that? Well, it depends on what they're being seen for. If they're in the ER for um, coming in for contractions, then of course you're going to code the pregnancy first. If they're in the ER because they twisted their ankle, got a dog bite, those kind of things, then you'll definitely do the dog bite or the twisted ankle first. Then you'll do their pregnancy and then their HIV status. Sequencing the sepsis guidelines, I have a great little cheat sheet that I share in my study group that is super helpful. It lists out all the reasons why or how we are going to code sepsis. Sepsis is separated into multiple parts where you code based on organ dysfunction or organ failure or not. So some sepsis does have acute or multiple organ failure and you'll use just one diagnosis for that. But if they end up with severe sepsis, um, you'll do at least two diagnosis codes. In some cases, you'll do three. And then in one case, you will end up doing a modifier. Um, well, it's an external cause from Chapter 19. You'll end up doing that one first. 
before you do sepsis. So their sequencing changes on that one particular example. So if you don't have a copy of this, you can screenshot this. You can get rid of chat too so that the comments are not on your screen by swiping left during this live. Then you'll have a screen of just what I'm showing you without the chat on there. And then you can do your screenshot. And then um, you can go back to reading the chat if you wanted to, just in case you didn't know that. Sepsis will be on your CPC coding exam, so be sure and make note of that for sure. You'll do other things like medication toxicity. Um, there's one way you code it if the physician gave the prescription, then what you code first is the symptoms that are the allergic reaction to the medication, and then your medication, your T code, which is an external cause that'll list out the name of the medication, will be second. But if the patient took something on their own, like they drank too much alcohol, got alcohol poisoning, ate too many mushrooms, or they were poisoned in some way by their own doing, then you do the T-code first, listing out what medicine or drug it was, and then you'll do the symptoms second. So be sure you know those kind of guidelines, which are important for the CPC exam. Um, also, hernias and hernia repairs, you'll need to know... First thing is the age of the patient. Then you'll also need to know the condition of the hernia. Is it just a normal hernia or is it a strangled, incarcerated hernia? Or is it reoccurrent? Those kind of things you're going to need to know first. And also placement of it. Is it epigastric? or in another location. <clears throat> I really like this chart that I found on the internet. I'm going to bring it up here real quick because it shows where all the hernias are on a simple little plane, little body part diagram. That's your epigastric right there, your umbilical cord. That's your most easiest one. <clears throat> then you got your incisional hernias and then you got your splinglin whatever hernias and then your femoral hernias. So I love this little sheet. Um, it's just real simple, real basic, but then gives you all the different locations so you can have a visual on it. That's super helpful for the exam. Sequencing. Um, Stuff like burns, if you're doing burns, you need to make sure that you're coding your deepest degree burn first. So if they have third degree and second degree burns, you'll always code your third degree first. Now, if they have, what's that wrapper right there? Throw that away. Thank you. If they have corrosion burns, like from battery acid, that trumps fire burns, and you code those first. Even if they have one degree corrosion burns, but third degree fire flame burns, you're definitely going to code your third degree burns first. I mean, second after your corrosion burns. So be sure and know that particular guideline. I like to move them like I did this one to the actual codes in the ICD-10 book so that I have it there, so that I know. That way it's not up in the front in those guidelines. You're not going to have time to reference those anyway during your CPC exam, so moving it to the actual codes is super helpful. You gonna get a hot dog and eat anything, Mister Mister? Mm -hmm. I know. 
There's more chips in the in the kitchen. Go go away. Be sure you know which phalange you're dealing with. They are numbered. In your CPT book, you do have an anatomy picture with the hand on it, but the fingers are not labeled. So let's say you're doing a trigger finger injection for the third proximal phalange. You're going to need to know that your thumb is number one, index, and then down to the pinky. You're also going to need to know your parts. This is the distal end the part from the very top of your finger to the first knuckle, which a lot of guys cut off um, playing around in the garage. That's a common injury. You're going to need to know that that is the distal end of the finger. Now from that first knuckle to the second knuckle, um, right there, between here and here, is called the middle. And then the last big knuckle down to your hand part that is the proximal area. So when they are listing out something in the CPC exam question and they're saying they're giving a trigger finger injection on the fourth uh, phalange in the proximal area, you'll know that they're meaning right here and you'll assign the correct CPT code. So labeling the body parts that are in the CPT book better than what they are labeled is key too. If you happen to take your exam online and you do one part of it one day like at noon and then do the second part on another day at noon also, you can see from here how the test is broken up from day one to day two or part one and part two here. That's super helpful to know what you're going to face each day instead of the whole entire exam, I think. But just to let you know, it pretty much goes in order. Anemia, chemotherapy, and dehydration for cancer patients is another guideline you need to know about in the CPC exam. So if a patient has anemia due to the malignancy, you're going to code the malignancy first. If they end up with anemia due to chemotherapy and immunotherapy, you're going to do the an anemia first. Nope. You're going to do the anemia first, right? And then you're going to be doing your cancer. And then you're going to be doing an external cause code. And they're different based on whether it's radiation or chemo and immunotherapy. One's a Y code, one's an X code, or something like that. So you're going to need to know those differences for the CPC exam. Let me get my book real quick, and I'll let you know for sure. He ain't going out there in shorts, short sleeves. Nope, 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 nope. Get your britches on before you go outside. I don't know if I need Now you won't go. <laughs> I wanted to put my pants, but I had to apparently go. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You don't get to play with your friends when you're suspended from school either, by the way. Go get your own and leave my food alone. Yeah, but... Um, now, <sighs> Mr. Lee has to come home. You're not going to sit there and just eat chips. That's all you had for breakfast, and that's all you're eating right now. Go get a hot dog. I've not been feeding my children lately. <laughs> I've been tutoring and tutoring and tutoring and tutoring. So, your... Anemia due to the malignancy is the malignancy first, and then anemia second. If it's due to the treatment of the chemotherapy or immunotherapy, you will do anemia first, the neoplasm, and then your T code. Then if it's radiation is caused the anemia, you will do anemia, the neoplasm, and a Y code.
if it's dehydration, no matter what, if they're just dehydrated, it's always dehydration first and then malignancy, which is a little different because one of our anemias is second over here. So writing those four out is super helpful. Even if you go to the anemia codes and write the scenario there, at the neoplasms, if you write at the top of the or the beginning of the C section, that's great. Even if you go to the Y section and write this out there, it's not much to write. It's a little bitty thing just like that, but that will definitely help. Go to your dehydration codes, write out the scenario about malignancy, and then also that right there. <laughs> Delta. Shell says hello, Mr. Travis. My non-eater. He just wants to eat chips today. I, she, he says hello back. I come out to the living room this morning and, you know, those Lay's potato chips. They're just the really thin and salted and, you know, whatever. I had poured a big bowl of them last night for communal. Everybody could pick from them. I come in this morning and he's dumped a bunch of soy sauce all over them. Like it needs more salt. <laughs> The entire bowl, the communal bowl, has now soy sauce all over it. Like, dude, you couldn't just put you some in a separate bowl, and no, you have to mess up the entire bowl of chips. Good gracious. Never going to learn. Never going to learn. He finally finished his second day of school suspension today, so now they're out of school for two weeks. Oh, they know everything about you, Travis. They They know everything. Why are they so... <laughs> You're the one that's busting in up on my lives all the time, and then I have to explain what... Ex <laughs> You're my mailman. Yeah, you do my mail drop. So, yeah, that's my, my, my little Travi. And, um, but they're out of school for two weeks and going to drive me insane until they go back. <laughs> you wish you had half my patience. Ooh. Hey, Kimberly. And his clown shoes. They know all about your clown shoes. <laughs> the school. Those kids at school are mean, man. Mean. They're awful. He thinks it's artistic design and they're they're mean. They're, they're like, no, those are clown shoes. <laughs> Thanks, Kimber. All right. What else? Any tips on process of elimination with ICD tens? Yes, if you go, if you go to my YouTube page uh, at Coding by Jen, <clears throat> my very last live, the very last uh, two-hour video I posted um, is an hour of ICD ten codes guidelines. All that. That was my very last live, and it's posted. It did record. Thank God, TikTok. Thank you very much. So it's a really good review of ICD-10, and um, that has been posted. The chicken's good. I'm glad you think it's good. Awesome. You're actually eating. I love it. <laughs> my messenger group. Also, if you come find me at Jen Brewer. You can join our lovely little message group. I'm in it right now looking at the media files of it because that's an easy resource for looking for everything that I've already shared. Um, these are all the compliance and um, regulatory definitions that you can write in your book. Um, this page right here, one of my mentees wrote it up. And when she took her CPC exam, she said three of the answers from her exam were on this one page, which is super helpful. Like, one of the questions was, which one is not part of the small intestines? Well, she had the entire list of small intestines listed there. I can't tell you how helpful my little social group is. Very good, Travi. But to join it, you just need to come find me on my my messenger, which is Jen Brewer, and it's the same TikTok. Please stop eating my food. You have cheese nips. Go eat your stuff. Ask me here if you want to. 
and then um, I'll let you join. We, um, I query questions and ask um, people CPC exam questions all most every day. I try my very best. Um, we wish everybody good luck. We congratulate people when they um, do good and pass the exam. Um, we build everybody back up if they happen to not pass, but so far everybody's passing. We just got to stay at it. Um, don't be reading the questions and look at your answers and evaluate them. AAPC has patterns with all their questions. They love having answers that are none of the above or all of the above. So if you're ever stomped on one of those wordy ones that are lots of words like that and you don't have a clue which one to go for, just pick all of the above or none of the above. They like that kind of stuff. Um, but the social group is super cool. And that's where I got all this information that I'm sharing with you, except for the top 10 guidelines. I did that. The rest of this information did come from our group, and they are taking the CPC exam and coming back with words saying, this word was on my exam. It was an anatomy question. I didn't know where it was, or I didn't know where to find the answer. Um, and they're sharing that information so that I can share it during a live so that it can help you for your exam and hopefully make a difference in your life and let you know what is on it. So if you don't know what the sesamoid bone is, be sure and learn about that, where it's at, and um, that will be the biggest benefit. So you'll be able to pick out the correct answer right away. Be sure you know what the abbreviation NCCI means, how to code possible pneumonias. I have some examples here. Don't put your feet on the cat toys, please, Travis. Sorry. It's it's. Yes, please move it out of your way if you can't. Thank you, Miss G. You are awesome. Let's see about anything else. That was a good live video. Yeah, it is. You're taking your test tomorrow, Nicole. Oh, don't be nervous. You got this. Do you ever answer what CPT for simple closure if it was done on the neck? Did you ever answer... What CPT for simple closure of if it was on the neck? Did you ever answer? Did you ever answer what CP for simple closure if it was done on the neck? If it was done on the neck, what? what why are we having an issue figuring out what CPT code that is? I'm I'm just curious. I don't remember this, but. I'm wondering why it would be an issue. Let me see. Jane, Let me go to... Stop! Travis, you quit parenting your brother. He has a mommy right here. I can take care of it. All right. Simple closure of... That's debridement. Induction and removal. Some skin tags, blah, blah, blah. Shavings, excisions. We don't need to do that. Uh, removal of lesions. We don't need to do that. We're not doing debridement again. Intermediate repair, simple repair of the neck. So that's right. The neck is right here. So that's one, two, zero, zero, one. Simple. We're at scalp, neck, axle, external genitalia, trunk, and blah, 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 including the hands and feet. And then all you do have to do is add up the length of whatever issue it is. And neck would definitely fall into that one, two, zero, zero, one. And you just need to know how much to add based on that kind of stuff. So it would be in all these ranges, depending on what's going on before you hit your intermediate. I hope that's helpful. Thank you for the roses. Was on the face. Face is right here too. So one, two, oh, one, one. 
we have the face, ears, eyelids, nose, lips. Was it chin? Was it something? It was something weird, like, was it cheek or something? But still, that would be face, right? And chin is considered face, I would think. I remember it being something weird. It was a body part, like, oh, that's not listed. I wonder where that is. Would it be... I don't know. I remember it being something. Face versus neck. Okay. That's right. Face versus neck. What if they had one that went from the beginning of their forehead, you know, to the side, that went down the side of their face all the way down their neck? You know, that would be interesting. I guess you, it's if it's one laceration and it goes all the way down doesn't stop all the way through the neck that would be an interesting thing to code I don't think AAPC will ask a question like that but I wonder if you stop it at the chin and then add the sums differently that would be interesting I hate coding it's all subjective I wouldn't want to do this job but I can definitely t teach y'all how to pass the exam for AAPC, but coding would drive me nuts as a medical auditor. That would just, I could look at things so many different ways and that would, that would drive me nuts. Yes, it was chin. Yeah, I remember something about that. Sorry if it was done on the chin. I don't remember. I remember it being something. I remember we, I was stumped on it at one point, but I've got face here. The other one, I have neck, scalp and neck. Isn't that weird how they separate out the scalp and neck? What, I mean, why is the forehead okay, but then the scalp isn't as far as face goes? Travis, please move out of that chair. It's creaking and distracting me. And then you've got face and ears over here, but scalp is over there. And then you have neck over there on the other one, too. It's just a real weird and odd way of separating out that whole thing. Why don't they just do the head and the neck, you know, and then start with the trunk area? It, it just That's just weird how they separate the face and the scalp and the neck all separated like that. Yeah. I don't know what their reasoning is. They have committees, people vote, and they have a whole bureaucracy around these CPT codes. Plus, it would be also nice to have that CPT insider for that year um, assistant. And then also, they're going to have one over here, the CPT assistant for that year, just to see what their descriptions are and examples. But that's so cool. Y'all are reminding me of stuff in my old lives to to look up and and remember to follow up on, which is lovely because my memory is blown with these kids. I think it was two cheeks, two cheeks, both of them. <laughs> I work in urgent care and we get all kinds of crazy repairs. I wonder how you code if you stop the laceration that may have started in the cheek area and then it went all the way down the length of the neck do you just at one point say okay stop measuring at that particular point and this becomes the neck my neck looks like my chin so I don't know how, <laughs> how you would decide which is which too so that'd be a whole nother can of worms to to bring out oh candy canes that's so cool uh, I'm glad I don't have to code for a living because that would that would drive me nuts. Thanks, Shell. <laughs> Another thing that um, we needed to know was how do you code somebody that's fixing to have a heart attack? They haven't had it yet. You know they're going to. What do you do when they need you need to code? There's only three codes in the ICD-10 book that you can code that are in pending diagnoses. And that's coronary syndrome, um, 
this Tiemann's diagnosis, whatever that is, delirium, Tiemann's, whatever that is. And then it's apparently a psych thing if it's an F. And then the myocardial infarction is the same thing as coronary syndrome, which is the same thing as ischemic something or another. So anyway, just be sure you know that you can do that. And that's where you find the code. And it, you can actually find it in the index. Look under impending. So that's where it is. Be sure you know what parts of Medicare do what. Write it in your book somewhere where you know you can find it. That's the biggest thing is when you prep these books and you put information in places. I filled up my ICD-10 book full. I colored all the pictures and everything, but I wasn't in that book, but maybe for five questions and I forgot about all that information that I wrote in there. So I really recommend keeping it all in your CPT book, but you need to keep it organized. I put administrative stuff, health insurance plan stuff, uh, compliance and guideline stuff in the front of the book before the ENM section. That way I can just go section by section in the CPT book, um, keeping it relative relevant to that section so that I don't have to search for things. I did hear the news. I was tutoring yesterday and my phone blew up. Talk about getting distracted. I did hear that the exam is going to um, go down by 50 questions. And I often wonder about the legalities of the exam to begin with because five hours and 40 minutes in one place at one seat isn't even something that you could do federally even on the job every four hours you need a 30 minute break or something right so um not that every job uh, follows those rules for sure but um i'm glad to see it because physically it's that's a really hard day for for you and it would take days and it does take days to recover from that particular day if you take it all at one time in one sitting in person um, five hours and 40 minutes on one exam is excruciating and physically, not just mentally. Mentally, it's, it's, y'all know it's bad. But federally, you can't just, no lunch, no break, no nothing. What? And, and they have a 10 minute break in there. It used to be five hours and 30 minutes and you couldn't leave your seat or they timed you and it was awful for the, um, proctors now they factor in a 10 minute potty break and that's all you get in five hours and 30 minutes just legalities of that has been wrong from the get-go even registered nurses and physicians when they sit for their boards 75 questions you don't you don't and it's unlimited time and they can you know they don't have this wild 120 seconds per question um, thing and then all these questions thrown at them so I'm really glad to see them changing it and I also noted that in their email that they did mention that they have psychometrics people third party look at their exam psychologically and I knew that the way they write their exam questions they use human psychology in them to make you pick the wrong answer so that's just further information that lets me know that you do not need to read those questions you really should avoid it like I've been saying you go to the answers you eliminate your answers based off of code irregularities if you are able to eliminate answers because you know you can't code that code with that code that modifier would never go with that CPT code. That CPT code in the parenthetical notes says you can't use it with this code, and that's a possible answer. And you can eliminate those without even looking at the test question. Then you're better off 100% in passing that exam than you are by reading those exam questions from beginning to end and then trying to decipher which answer is correct. You're wasting your time. Your time is better spent working on those codes for sure. And you can do it a whole lot faster than reading and understanding this, 
the clinical scenario that's going on in the question, for sure. I don't know what the questions are going to look at um, and be after the after January 1st. So I'm a little hesitant in recommending people wait and just take the 100 question exam because what if my processes don't work? I haven't audited that exam. I've audited 2019, 2020, and 21 exams. I know what to expect and I know how the exam questions are written. 2022 exam questions might be just 100 questions instead of 150, thank you, and four hours long to take it. You're going to get a measly 40 seconds extra or 20 seconds extra, I think, is the way you divide it up. Um, two minutes and 40, 20 seconds each question, so you're going to get very little extra time. You are going to get less questions. 100 is pretty much the limit that you should have already been assigned anyway. That's that's a big number in four hours. But I don't know if they're going to change up the wording or their examples, any at all. I haven't audited that exam. So I know my processes work right now for the current exam that have been written because I've audited those. I can't wait to audit what they're putting out um, 2022 and I will. Um, I'm just going to need some time to do that as soon as they publish their practice exams will give me some clues. I doubt I could sit for the CPC exam again since I've already passed it, but um, I guess I could not turn in my CEUs and do that. <laughs> Take it again. Hmm, I didn't think about that, but um, we'll see. I'll know more when they publish their practice exam questions for the 2022 year. Um, and if you're planning on taking it in 2022, um, try not to do it on like January 10th or something. Let me let me audit something first. <laughs> Make sure it's okay. But I, I think it'll be good. I hope it, I hope they haven't changed the questions at all. They just refactored in and now instead of 10 questions per section, there's like 7 or 8 per section and 3 hit picks and three diagnosis codes, you know, they'll just shorten the numbers. I'm hoping that they'll do something like that. Yes, I took my first CPT. I just took my CPC on the fifth time on the fourth and I passed. So anyone discouraged on not passing? I hope not. Miss G, you are awesome. So glad you passed. Just go for it. Your voice would hear in my head, and I don't need to code. It's been coded for you. Yes, let me be that bird on your shoulder just irritating you. Stop coding the exams. I can't tell you how many people I mentor, you know, that do tutoring with me, and they're sitting there coding. And I'm like, no, 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 yeah, you're reading too much. You're reading too much. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Um, you just don't code. You do not need to go into that exam as a coder because you you will waste time. You will see too much into those questions. They are pointing you in a re it, it, There's a reason why they picked the CPT codes that they picked. And it's either a parenthetical note, a guideline note, that's it. They want to know if you realize what's going on with those codes, what you can code with those codes, what you can't code with those codes, and um, it's either a parenthetical, a modifier issue, it's all in the parenthetical notes, or in those little bitty guidelines in between the coding sections. So we're coding here in Intigmentary. There's a little section they're telling you something. Before you code right here, there's a reason why they might pick that code or one of these codes. It's because of this writing in between. They told you something here. They told you, for example, not to code something here or right here. They're giving you an example. For example, to do this, you're going to do that. And they want to know, did you read that? Do you understand what was going on right there in that one thing? Also right here, 
do not include, blah, 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 whatever it is. They want to make sure you understand some of this stuff. So for my 2022 notes, instead of doing this lovely highlight mess, um, I'm going to take this stuff and move it to that code, to that code. It's only six codes, right? And put do not include blah, blah, blah next to it. That's going to be more helpful than having this highlighted. It's there anyway. Moving some of this guideline stuff to the codes is going to be way more helpful than anything I've done before. But let's get back to some of this vocabulary because I know some people are going to be sitting for their exam tomorrow and the next day. But yeah, I know after my YouTubes or my TikToks uh, playing your head for so long, you're hearing me in your dreams or during your exam. So that's good. That's good to know that you can hear me while <laughs> you're taking your exam. I know you'll be happy not to hear my voice after all this. Are there many insurance questions on CCS? There are more insurance questions on the CCS definitely than there are on the CPC. They are going to want to make sure you know place of services codes. They're going to want to make sure you understand some of the revenue code systems. Um, if it was Blue Cross, you would bill this way. If it was Medicare, you're going to code this way. CPC does do a couple of Medicare questions, but nothing like the CCS is. Um, they are way more involved in that. Plus, you have those 10 questions at the end that you have to um, code by yourself because it's not multiple choice. You do get to pick from an array of codes, but... Um, it's not multiple choice per se like the rest of the questions because they're bigger op notes. I wonder if AHIMA is going to follow along the same way that AAPC is and cut down the length of their exam also. That would be interesting to see. AAPC has also changed their guidelines to if you take it online, you can only get one try. But if you take it in person, you can get two tries. What I did was I took it in person just to audit the exam. I came and highlighted all the codes that were on my exam in pink and wrote out all the words and definitions. That way I could come home and audit the exam, like why did they pick this code in this section? What are they trying to teach me? Um, why was that a possible answer? Why was other codes a possible answer? And then when I went to take it online, I just had to call them and ask them to convert my online, my in-person leftover exam to an online one and did it that way. They're super helpful and nice on the phone and they didn't mind doing that. But being so that I can teach y'all a little thing or two, but that's okay. We'll know how to pass the exam now. Did y'all hear I got a 90% this week? Somebody passed with six wings so that I can teach y'all a little thing or two, but that's okay. We'll know how to pass the exam now. Did y'all hear I got a 90% this week? Somebody passed with six 100s like Jess did, and she passed with a score of 90%. It's awesome. I'm going to have AAPC come after me. They already have me as a guest educator, but now they're going to come after me because I got too many people passing. That's going to be fun. There's another definition right there. They already have me as a guest educator, but now they're going to come after me because i got too many people passing. That's going to be fun. There's another definition right there. It's inflammation of the veins, and it can also cause some blood clots. So be sure you understand what that one is. Did I go over the venous valves? That is not cardiology. You might think it was because it says valves, but that is actually joints. It allows your mu muscles and tendons to go back and forth like that. It's a valve, but it's not cardiology, so be sure to know that. Um, sepsis, we went over. There's some examples of sepsis in the proper order of diagnosing. If they had pneumonia, respiratory failure, sepsis, kidney failure, and then severe sepsis, that's a lot. 
but that's the proper order of how you would code it. Here's some more where they had bacteremia. Um, you end up with the UTI first, the bacteremia, and then this pneumonia thing that happens with that one. We've got sepsis and E. coli with a renal problem, another sepsis with an abscess, and a pulf perforation of the intestines. Yeah, he was hurting himself yesterday sneezing. It was, it was funny to watch him struggle. I'm about to start an online class. I'm so nervous. I'm so sorry for you. I hope you have a good outcome with your course. I find 1% uh, of people that I talk to have a good outcome. Most of it is busy work. Um, they have to rush through the chapters so quickly. And the homework is all busy work and impractical. And... They did not even teach the practical parts of some of the books that would have been notable to know for the CPC exam. They don't teach it from the CPC exam point of view. They teach it from a career's worth of coding, and it's very difficult to learn a whole career's worth of coding in a 13-week, a six-month course, or even a nine-month course. It really is difficult. Um... Either it's too slow paced or too fast, too much busy work, and not taught from the point of view of the exam. Um, I hope you have a much better outcome, and if you need any help with the homework or don't understand something, please let me know. I do have an email link in the Tiki Talk, so if after the live, when you're on TikTok, no telling what's going to come up. And you click on, let me get rid of this, that's my chat bar. You click on my face, it'll pop up with this little thing right here. But you can't do it during the live, you have to wait till after the live. My email address is right there. I'm slower at replying to emails than I am on Messenger, but it's there. Okay. And then there's the link for a coupon off the Etsy store. And that's if you want a copy of the notes, which can be super helpful. I'll show you a couple of examples real quick. I've been trying to type out the entire CPT book <laughs> for 2022, and I'm dying. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. I do have this list of what was recently on the CPC exam up posted. But what I typed so far this year for 2022, and this will be okay for 2021 bucks if you have it. I'm waiting on it to come up. The internet is so slow. I hope I'm not falling out on you guys. But what I did was I took the guidelines and left it on half the page, highlighted what you're supposed to highlight, and then I put um, billing or coding or sequencing right there of how you would sequence that guideline what it would look like if you build it coded it um, tips and all that kind of stuff on the second part of the page and that coupon will add another 30 percent off so it'll make it not 10 percent off but 40 percent off if you click on that link in the bio by the way i also typed up um, this year where is it the i e and m section it is super cool because, yeah, my internet is dying. I hope I'm still going live because my internet is dead on my phone. But I'm sure I got a screenshot of it somewhere. Y'all let me know if y'all can hear me just because I'm worried I can't be heard right now. I'm hoping I can be. We got this new internet service, and it's not the best. Well, it's the same service. We got a new modem from the old service, and Lord, we drop all the time. Okay, good show. So my E and M section has this. It's the CPT code, and you can't see it because it's in pink, but. It's the CPT code, and it'll list out your 
problem, problem, straightforward, your MDM, your history examination. It'll tell you how many minutes and then two of three or three of three that you need. But it'll list out the codes and what's going on with each one, whatever you need. But then it'll tell you on either side of it what you can't code with it. It'll show you examples of how to code it and what to code it with. It's super cool. I love it. Tons of examples of how to do transitional care, you name it, of giving you examples right beside the code so you know how to code them. And then only left in the important parts that you need to know so you know which to underline for your ex um, book marking it up. So super helpful. Um, for the CPC exam, be sure, guys, to know the three parts of the shoulder, three parts of the knee, and three parts of the humerus bone. Those are super important. More examples of sepsis. Let me move on. I'm talking too long. All right. We've got some ARDS. Be sure you know what that is abbreviated for. ABN and the number of the form. The 131, be sure you can pick that out and why we would be using an ABN form. The phalanx bone, be sure you know it's in the hand. Triplet delivery, do you know how to deliver that? Your seventh character on your diagnosis code is the number of fetuses. If there's twins, your ICD-10 code will end in a two because they have two babies. So things like that, be sure you know that. The divided parts of the knee, you have the medial, lateral, and the patella. You should know that. Um, multiple guidelines. I already talked about HIV with other guidelines with stuff that's going on. If they're there for appendix, you code that appendix first, then their HIV status. I talked about metastasizing and cancer codes. I have some examples there. The hip picks code S13. One is for the glucose monitoring rental. Be sure you understand that. This particular surgery is for putting the vaginal walls back up where they go um, during a hysterectomy or if you have to remove um, tumors from that area. Be sure you understand those. Um, let's see. We've got critical care there. Critical care, you love coding critical care. Critical care is so easy. When you get to that uh, 99291 and the 99292, all you have to do is look at your question, add up the total time that the patient was in critical care, and look on the chart that's up above it and code it exactly like they say it. Pick out that answer that way. Super helpful. Love it. Um, be sure you know your modifiers for anesthesia. There are a ton of them, and they're in the hip picks book of all places instead of in the CPT book. So you need to move those anesthesia codes to the anesthesia section in the CPT book. Be sure you understand what the modifiers all mean. There are separate codes that you may need to use for anesthesia, like the 99100 code. That is for patients over 70 years old or under one year old who need anesthesia. You need that extra CPT code because they are of higher um, complication risk due to their age, simply because of their age. So if, big if, the CPT code descriptor does not have an age listed in it and your patient is over 70 or under one year old, then you must add that code. AAPC is going to give you two questions. One will be where you need to add that code for an 80 year old patient and one will be where you do not need to add that code for a six month though. Because the CPT code says that the anesthesia is for a one year or younger. So pay attention to those anesthesia codes. Don't let them trick you. You don't always use that code, but you do need to make sure you understand that anybody under that age needs a specific code or add that code for a particular age and procedure. 
Mm. There is a different way. Look at that boy being so good on the... On the y'all see him? I don't know if y'all could see him. He is. He's playing his switch. Aw. Thank you for being good, Travi. All right. Let's see. I know they're tired of listening to me. Mushrooms. If a patient, I've already discussed this, took a bunch of mushrooms, they did it to themselves, then you know you're going to do that T-code first, and then you're going to give them the symptoms that they were nauseous, delusional, didn't know where they were at, and panicked, <laughs> had some anxiety, that kind of thing. That was all part of a exam A, if you happen to get exam A. This one is part of exam B. If you get it, they had a lot of urethra blockages, things like that were on their exam. Be sure you understand how to code the stents, um, blockages. Um, they can cause any one of these diseases um, that are usually acute. They can go away, but they can be pretty deadly pretty quickly. They also had the issues of split thickness grafts and full thickness grafts. So grafts can be either your own body part being put on you into a, a, an infected area or somebody else has donated some sort of skin to you or an animal has been picked to donate some skin to you. So the way I look at it is if you're in the driver's seat and you're driving the car, auto graft, it's your body. If it's allograft, it has two sticks in it for the L. So that's somebody else walking their body part to you to give you their body part. And then X means, uh-uh, you're not putting a pig or a fish on me. Just walk away. Nope, 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 nope. We'll just have a scar. It's okay. There's also, I've written out <clears throat> the the split thickness graphs and the full thickness graphs and I've separated them out by CPT codes and by location for you here <clears throat> so that you can find them easier if you need it. Be sure you understand the differences and all the complexities along that go along with hypertension and CKD. Find you some real examples of CPC exam questions or CCS exam questions that have to deal with hypertension and CKD and go put those examples in the ICD-10 book with those codes. Write the examples in the correct order of how you they would be billed for the exam if we're looking for the correct answer. That way you have it for sure as a reference. If you're taking a course my new girl who's fixing to start a course who's nervous, every question, no matter what chapter, no matter what area you're in, write a little something. If you had a question about a horn's skin tag removal, and even if you got the answer wrong, you finally figured out what the correct answer was the teacher gave you, write down the code with the modifier, in the correct order, with the diagnosis is used as your example that your teacher gave you in your book. Every question. You will have an entire course of examples written down for you at the end of that course in your book for reference. The, hugely beneficial. You might not understand some of this stuff, and you might not get the whole grasp of all of it, but you've got an example, and if, and you will get a CPC exam about a wart removal, because that's what that is, uh, you will have a reference of how your teacher said to code it when you see it. We're going to hope she's right, and we're going to write the example here. Super helpful. You're also going to go to those ICD-10 codes, write the example next to both of those codes with your CPT codes and everything else that goes with it, just in case you end up on a page where you're only looking at this code or you're only looking at that one, but you have the rest to reference. Put a word or two down so you know what you're dealing with. We're just doing a wart removal. Super helpful.
Super helpful. Let <clears throat> me get a drink. <laughs> hey, Marissa. We're just going over what's recently been on the CPC exam in the last, I don't know, 50 days or so. So we had some modifiers, 53, 22, 52, and 59. Modifier 53 is to be used when surgery is terminated. So that's usually, as far as CPC is concerned and AAPC, it would be they had to discontinue, stop the procedure to do CPR. It's usually a fatal issue, something happened, they had to actually terminate the procedure due to an emergency. It wasn't something that they decided or were going to stage or do something else later. Nope, there was an emergency. We had to stop, do CPR. They were crashing. It was a major deal if you're going to use 53. Unusual procedure services and reduced procedure services can be on that exam. Reduced the CPC example that they love to use is a colonoscopy. And if they only ended up doing a flex sig or stopping before they got to the cecum, don't code a cecum or a flex sig. You go on and code your colonoscopy because that was the plan. That's what they did. He did the prep for that, the patient and the physician. They were going to do it, but then they had to reduce the service because they stopped before they got to the cecum. So that's when you would use 52. 59 is the number one misused CPT modifier in the world in the real life. So it is never to be used unless any other modifier in the entire hit picks book, because that's where all your modifiers are, by the way, not in CPT, but if any other modifier can tell the story, then use it. But AAPC uses it quite a bit in the CPC exam. But you won't, you're not supposed to see it that often in real life. But I, it is used quite a bit in real life. But re, in reality, you'll get a lot of denials for that one. So be careful with that one when you get out in the real world. But I have some examples here of how you should code it for AAPC CPC exam. And I've divided up all your modifiers so that you know which ones are uh, pricing modifiers, payment modifiers, or location modifiers. Um, more urethra blockage issues, same information. We've got uterine pro prolapse questions, um, first degree, second degree, and a complete or third degree. I have some clinical scenarios here on how you would code it with the diagnosis codes and your CPT code on how you fix those situations. But that was definitely on your exam B. If you're taking it in person, you'll know if you get exam B because they're, they're labeled A, B, C, and D and stuff like that. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm just rattling on. What kind of CPT questions do y'all wanna to see tonight for the process of elimination to? I haven't prepped anything, but I got stuff, always. Um. I mentored today on ICD-10. No, I didn't. I did um, <laughs> E&M. I did a, a e and m today. Oh, gosh. I got two, I got four hours of mentoring to do tomorrow. So it's killing me with all this um, tutoring, just the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, and I've got family coming, what, seven, six days, somewhere around there? Yeah, i got to clean this house. It's a hot mess. Lord have mercy. And cook. So I'm getting, I've already shut down the tutoring for the year. But if, if it's an emergency between now and the end of the year, please let me know. You're going to have to reach out to me. Email me a bunch. <laughs> Contact me on my medical coding gen website. Just bug me. And then messenger. You're going to have to bug me to get me to remember to, oh yeah, I got to stop and do this. Oh yeah, I got to stop and do this. That's fine. And I'm here to help you. And I really do want to help you. Just bug me. Okay. Just bug me. Um, 
let's see. So I can open up the schedule and let you book that. So, um, which hormones regulate blood sugar, glucose? So be sure you understand glucagon is one of your hormones along with, you know, that helps you produce the insulin and stuff. So be sure you know that and know what neurotransmitters do um, and their signals. We got the OIG right up my alley for uh, medical auditing. Be sure you understand what the work plan is, why we do it, mm, how often we do it, that kind of stuff. What, boo? Thank you for the announcement on the live. Everybody wants to know when you want to go potty or you need to go potty. My 13-year-old still announces when he goes potty. Great. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> I love making fun of them. Oh, my gosh. Y'all. Okay. Uh, be sure you understand that kidneys... Um, Urine is transmit, transported from the kidneys to the bladder, and then ureters are those tubes, and they're small and smooth muscle fibers, that kind of stuff. So be sure you understand all the workings of all that stuff. And um, we've got a CPT code of 853. Um, what can you not code with that one? That's like your comprehensive and your basic metabolic panel in your lab and path section. You can't code those two together because they have the same repeat test in them, except for one test is different. The calcium ionized is done in basic, where regular calcium is done in the comprehensive. So what you would need to do is order your comprehensive with just a plain one test calcium ionized ordered separately with that so be sure you understand some of the guidelines along with that it could be a hepatic panel or some other panel that they pick to choose which two can't be coded together um, just understand that if they have any of the same repeat test in them which all the cpt codes are listed in those panels if anything matches you can't code those together you're going to have to code them individually Be sure you understand what hip picks is, what it does, and what it's holding, and how often it updates. It's quarterly, not yearly. Miscarriage questions, um, the day after pill, or medically induced ABs um, with the kids. So um, be sure you understand some of these things um, and some of the CPT codes related to those areas. Um, there's your bones of the shoulder. Be sure you know those. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know how to say that word, but that's a fancy word. And I did draw it in on the anatomy in your muscular skeletal section in the CPT book because they didn't mark those areas. Even though it's drawn in, they didn't mark them. So be sure you know those. CLIA. Be sure you understand what a CLIA waiver is. Be sure you know how often they audit or uh, um, need to be regulated, which is every two years. They have to uh, pay some fees and get audited, so be sure you understand those. Some fraudulent questions, which one means fraudulent? Even if you lower a code level, that's still fraud. Even And you know you think about it, you think that upcoding is fraud, but you don't think that lowering the code is, but it is. It's fraud too. So be sure you understand some of the fraudulent things that could happen with coding. You need to be specific on what you know about all that. E modifiers for your eyes. E for eye. So upper eyelid has an E modifier. Lower eyelid has a modifier right and left. There's also abbreviations. OS does not always mean I. It could mean your vaginal or cervical areas. Um, it could mean um, also right eye, left eye, OU, OS, all those things. There's a, Some abbreviations have multiple use, so you really need to pay attention to the question and make sure you understand what they're talking about. Um, the part of the eye that is transparent or also the definition for um, what a 
D-A-C-R-Y is, and that's just your tear duct, your lacrimal gland. It kind of like lactate, but it's not. It's a tear duct, but I don't know. They spell it that way anyway. So all that needs to be known, that it's all related to the same area. Here's our opening to those areas I was talking about. You've got your internal cervical OS, which is for the uterus, and then your external cervical OS is opening of the Yep, yep. So we've got the colposcopy, which is the fixing of the walls. Be sure you know your positions. Of course, that's face down. Sleep study. That CPT code. Um, the hypo pigmentation that can happen. Turn your skin completely white as a sheet of paper. Be sure you know that one. Your nursing facility codes. IVA. I haven't figured out exactly what they want. Or, their, or the question that they've been asking. IVA could mean a lot of things, but I'm thinking that it's going to mean the idiopathic ventricular arrhythmia. That's what I would pick out of it. It could mean intravenous anesthesia. It could mean a lot of things. So be sure and look at your question. If y'all ever have that question, and you could let me know a little bit about more of it, then what I have, all I have is the abbreviation, and I don't know in what context it's talking about. That could help somebody out, but I've listed all of them here. It could be hepatitis A. It could be anything. Who knows? But some of this information I could use some help on if y'all ever see that question again. Be sure you understand that my ring means the ears, that you're working on the ears. Modifier TC, that's a facility code. If a facility is leasing out or giving their machine or letting their machine be used, they get to bill for TC. 26 is the modifier for the provider to say, hey, I can interpret and, and give you a report on this and, and my, or my technical skills as a surgeon. But I'm also a pathologist who can make slides of whatever I cut out of the body. I get the modifier 26 because I'm a, I went to med school twice or something, got two different degrees and can do multiple parts. That's the difference. So 26 is for the physician. TC is for the facility for using their proton machines. It's got to be a mega machine, it's something cool that is rare out there in the world, not just your sort. Your, your, your simple stuff, but I guess a portable x-ray in the middle of crisis or something, but it's, it's, it's still the facility, so be sure you understand that. Diabetes type 1. This B exam goes into depth with this, um, and I'll tell you more as we're coming up. Group home. Be sure you understand the very first page in that CPT book is a list of service codes. Be sure you understand what group home is. I think it's 14 or something like that. But every place that you could give patient services in the middle of a field somewhere, there's a code for that, you know, or in, on a tribal land, there's a code for that. So be sure you understand about those service code areas. Um, the 30-day issue about Medicare. Here's some more Hip picks codes and some CPT codes that were on somebody's exam. I have not went and gotten the examples or the definitions for those yet, but at least you've got a direction to go in for right now. We've got some updates. Here's the OU, that's for eyes, um, for eyes, sorry. The pancreas islet and its function. So the pancreas is part of your digestive system, but the pancreas islet is part of your endocrine system. So super, they know, they understand that there is a difference there that is so rare that not a lot of people are going to know. They're going to automatically assume anything in the pancreas is part of the digestive system and pick the wrong answer. But actually the pancreatic islet or anything that says islet, like longer hand, there's an actual L word that goes with islet. That just means it's the pancreas islet part. They just have another name for it and AKA for it. It's found in the endocrine system. So we'll get to that in just a minute. I have it down here. Um, the warthon tumor is in your salivary gland. Be sure you know there's a war in your mouth, right? 
that just think war goes with mount. Day cry, I always think about Draco crying at Harry Potter. Draco was crying, so that's my tear duct. Hip pick abuse, be sure you understand what is under HIPAA and what isn't. Like workman's comp is not under HIPAA, just in case you didn't know. Exam A2 had balloon catheter stenosis valve. An aortic valve stenosis, it had fistulas and shunts, femoral stem, more abuse and fraud. It had that NCCI, of course. I had listed the sepsis, the twins, the, uh, the warthon, the spleens, the ARDS, meningitis. There's probably not a lot here I haven't already hit. I already told you about that. S131, that is for the rental of the glucose machine. JVD is jugular vein distension. Don't forget the very back of your CPT book, the cover of your CPT book. If you flip open that cover on the inside is a list of abbreviations. JVD is not there. It's in alphabetical order too, so you can write that in somewhere on that back page. That way you have it. Some of the definitions there in the back cover have two definitions and only a baby little comma separates them. So if it's not the first words, then it might be the second set of words. But it's very hard to see because it's such tiny print. Oh, and did you know if you took your CPC exam in person, if you wanted bigger font, you could ask for it ahead of time and they'd ship you an exam with bigger font. Anyway, interesting. I forgot to say something like that. Here's our islet of lager hands. Sounds like I'm ordering beer to me. I mean, that's just crazy. But it is part of your endocrine system. Okay. The pancreas is part of your digestive system. The pancreatic islet is part of your endocrine system. And because you have one body part in two systems like that divided up, um, AAPC is picked on that for part of their thing. There's a scenario about a doctor leaving for a month and another doctor comes in to fill in for him while he's gone. How do you bill? You still bill under Dr. Gons, NPI and everything. The only thing you add is a modifier Q6 to say that the doctor that is here and seeing patients that day is not the original doctor with that MPI. It's somebody who's filling in. It's all you do is add that Q6. So be sure you know that. Jess, one of my mentees who passed with the six 100s and, and some of her sections, she came back with that information. So super helpful to have shared that kind of stuff. Which procedure requires, requires irrigation? Is it simple, intermediate, or complex? In case you didn't know, it is intermediate. Complex is where you're usually harvesting skin tissue from another healthy area and putting it into an unhealthy area. Well, you wouldn't do that if there was something that you needed to irrigate. You would let it heal somewhat and then bring them back and then put in the fresh tissue once you've got all the infection that could happen gone. Um, it's not complex. The answer should be intermediate, just in case you needed to know. And here's some exam examples or things that were on exam C. So my ring is for the ears. Trichomonas is a sexually transmitted disease back from the 90s. They're asking about that sucker. Uh, modifier 22, the corpus Ludum, I do have the definition down here. Right femoral artery. They had angiograph was performed. Right common femoral artery. Patient undergoes insulin as underdosed. So be sure you understand the guideline about underdosed and overdosing. The coding doesn't change, but there is a guideline about what codes first. Is it the insulin? Is it the diabetes? Or is it the complications? So be sure you understand about underdosing and overdosing. <clears throat> fracture with hepatitis or HIV. So the fracture is coded first, then your HIV will be coded sex second. 
your gallbladder. It stores bile. They had penile gland. They had hypothalamus. Here's your eyes, by the way, the OD, OS, and OU, right eye, left eye, and both eyes. But you have an OS in your cervix and other area, like I said before, so be sure you know that. We went to war in our mouth again. There's your different parts of the knee. We have the femur, tibia, and patella, and then we have two Hinge joints for articulation, right? Your tip femoral jo joint and your patella femoral joint. Be sure you know those. The JVD came up. There's our trichomonas. Our corpus luteum is a temporary gland that secretes hormones and estrogen and progesterone to prepare the body for conception. So it's just temporary. But why they call something that's giving life a corpse, I don't know. That's just really weird, but I have the definition there. More updates about group homes. Medicare defines medical necessity as what? I have all the definitions and some examples of what would go on during that stuff, and it just makes to make sure keep as what? I have all the definitions and some examples of what would go on during that stuff, and it just makes to make sure key point that it leads to a specific goal. Physical therapy is really working really good. I still can't do this, but I'm working on it. I'm getting there, getting so much better. Be sure you understand what the metastasis, whatever in the thoracic cavity is, the three layers of the eye. I've got the cornea and sclera is in one layer. The uveal tract that holds the iris in this part and that part in one area. And then the retina is in the third layer. Yes, James Michael, what you need, baby? Oh, you seem to be breathing over my shoulder, so that's why I stopped. I'm like, there's like two feet between There's two feet. There is nothing but the back of the couch. You are hovering. You sure I can't do anything for you? Okay. You're good. Did you eat your yeah. chicken? Did you put your plate in the garbage after you got done since you're walking towards the kitchen as you're going? No? You can eat the cap nip if you want to. I don't guarantee the results won't land you in the ER, but yeah, if you want it. No, put the cat nip down, boy. If you lost your mind. Just a little bit. No, don't eat the cat nip. It's for the cats. I hope you die. I said don't eat the cat nip. No, you are not taking a little bit of catnip. That stuff's meant for cats, you dumbo. It's a neuro... Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, uh. Do you want to die of butt cancer? Stop it, Travis. You've already taken it too far and gone inappropriately. Thank you for putting the catnip down. Good God, y'all gonna give me a heart attack in the middle of my life. Yeah, sure. You're giving me chest pain, Travis. What? I can't even watch, um, what is that, Yellowstone with you in the same room. Oh, my gosh. Ever since that daughter went off on that woman. <laughs> I don't know if any of y'all watch Yellowstone, but she is hysterical. The daughter of the cowboy rancher dude went off on one of these girls that daddy had a one-night stand on and said some really bad things. I hope you die of this, that, and the other. And, of course, Travis has to repeat it every time somebody does something wrong. Okay, James, I'm explaining it. I don't need you to talk over me. Good gracious. Ambulance is service, a level one. Hit picks code. James, that's enough. Please stop. There is... Time reported for anesthesiology. Be sure you understand when time starts and when it stops. It's not what you think of. It's only when they start preparing the patient for the anesthesia, like getting ready to inject them, is when anesthesia time starts, not when they have a conversation with the patient. And then it only stops when they turn them over to post-op care. Your eye is lateral to your nose. What was on the CPC exam was this one, that the wrist joint is distal to the elbow, jo elbow joint. I can never say that. And that your knee joint is proximal to the ankle jo joint. Oh, my God. What? 
broken, but if John says they're okay, if I can have them, can I eat them? You cannot have those. No. If John says it's okay. No. Why not? Because I said no. Please put them back. Please quit banging they're on them. Broken. Just because they're broken doesn't mean this that you get to true. take them. You're acting like Travis. You're deciding for yourself that somebody else doesn't need their item and that you should take it because I'm, no, you are doing the same I'm thing. Ask. I'm ask John. And I said no. He doesn't ask. <laughs> 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 I saw all this sit down. Well, I think they, Beth is hysterical. That's her. Yeah, I'm terrible with names. I've been with the company uh, that I work for. I don't know. I'm there years and years, and I still don't know the coworkers' names. I'm terrible with names, but yeah, Beth is awesome. Beth is awesome. She is. She has to be an Aries, right, guys? She's so passionate. All right, we've got another secondary code. She is not a Sagittarius. That is not a Sagittarius at all. Okay, 0102T. That is electric shock waves that you have to give to a patient under anesthesia to get their elbow working correctly or to stop having pain. Super helpful to understand that that might be on the exam. Here are... Some more things that came back um, from others on their CPC exam. Open right compound fracture, G0009. Plaster cast of an 11-year-old. I've also seen the fiberglass cast of a child. Tubal pregnancy versus a molar pregnancy. Tubal, you know, is in the fallopian tubes. I've even seen one recently that ended up in the liver craziness this molar pregnancy is in like the placenta or something it's somewhere abnormal be sure you know the differences this is where we might see the third metacarsal joint so your third finger is one two three and it'll be in one of your joints here probably this is your pip joint i think this is the metacarpal so this might be where they're injecting um, we've got your lab rhinitis. Be sure you understand what blood pressure, what's going on in the different parts of the B and the P. The P is part of your pulse, so it's part of the beats of the blood, right? And the B is part of the pressure of the blood going through the veins. Like a water hose, if you stop it, we want to know the amount of pressure. If it's a lot of pressure or a normal amount of pressure, we can put numbers to that. So be sure you know the differences between the upper and lower numbers of the blood pressure. Pain in the butt to know. Um, we've got modifier 26 and TC. I already went over. Be sure you understand the different parts of the duodenum. Ilium, cecum, duodenum, which parts would be in the small intestines, which parts would not. Modifier 50, when should it be coded? One structure that has two sides. That calls for modifier 50. I even have a block here that tells you when not to use it. Um, here's our foramen magnum. That's one of the largest bones in your skull, be sure you understand that like a foreman on a construction company, yep, they wear a hard hat, so you have a hard skull bone. So try to think of things and associate them that way. That's a skull bone. Retina plays an important role in your vision. Be sure you understand what it does. Um, super important for this particular exam. We had some choices which ones are not part of image guidance. MRI is, so is the fluoroscope, and so is the CT. So whatever part that was other is not included. I've listed out the things right here that are part of image guidance. 
Um, another question about what cannot be coated with the CMP blood panel. They had hepatic. Hepatic is one of the options. They did not understand what was some of the other ones. They knew it wasn't a basic metabolic panel or a general health physical panel, but it was hepatic and then some other things. So be sure you understand what cannot be coded with 80053. We've got the human growth hormone for pregnancy. They had to do it out of a urine or blood test. So there are some differences. Here's another list of some things that I still need to go find some more information on. The J code, the J696 is this one. The common question with this one is, is doing one gram injection. So it would be this HIPPICS code times four because you need one gram. So just so you know that one. Um, let's see. What's the purpose of our local chapters with the AAPC? Modifier 51. What entities are under HIPAA? And I have a one-sheeter. I have two one-sheeters for HIPAA, actually. And let's see. Have I shared those recently? Oh, my book, my book, my book, my book. Yep. Here is your five entities under HIPAA. So if, again, if you tap on the live and you swipe left, it'll get rid of all of the chat and all the crap that's on the um, screen. So you can do a screenshot so you don't miss out on any of the words. But we've got a security rule. We've got a privacy rule. We've got a breach notification rule. We've got an enforcement rule. And then we have whatever this Omni rule is, too, for the technology. And you know, we have to have, when I do audits at medical offices, I have to make sure even their servers are behind two locks, like their injectables for Narcan or something are behind two locks. Super important there. Um, let's see. There's my blood pressure ones that will tell you what the top button does and the bottom button does. Numbers, not buttons, but you know what I mean. Um, super helpful. Oh, there's one that's super cool. If you're taking your test in person, think about what pencil you're using. Because if you're going to use a mechanical pencil with a super tiny, sharp end, you're going to spend all afternoon bubbling in those circles. Get you the fattest kindergarten pencil blunt end whatever you can find that will bubble fast i've even suggested these mark these mechanical carpenter pencils that have these square ends you can bubble a circle super quick with these things just saying if you have time to order something like that um look at that 90 y'all woohoo that's awesome. There's the scores where they got this hundred percent in sections. Can y'all imagine? That's just awesome. Love it. Love it. Um, what else? What else? Oh, sharing copies of our books. I want some of these glasses so you can record and then you can also hear out of these things and you can get your prescription glasses in these Ray-Bans. They're like $2.99 and you can get your real prescriptions in it, but it has <laughs> a mic and a recording thing. I was joking around about those the other day. Super funny, but man, yeah. This is where I share where I write down stuff in the CPT book for the external causes. You know, you got to have those in order. So when you're picking out codes to know which to code first, which to code second, don't forget that whatever activity they were doing when they got hurt is usually one of the last things you'll code. How they got hit, what happened, they got a bloody nose, they were at home playing baseball. Most people think that the home might be last, but baseball would actually be the last thing. They were at a bar, had a fight, and they got stabbed. So they got stabbed. They have a laceration to something. This is your first code. And they were at a bar would go next. And then the last thing was that they were drinking <laughs> or got into a fight. You know, the activity 
is is one of the last things you code. Super helpful to just go write it all out by the codes. Um, we've got layered closure with irrigation. Um, if you have a single layer closure, so it's simple, but you had to do an irrigation because it had some filthy stuff in it, like they went, they fell into a reservoir or something, but you had to irrigate it before you sewed it up. You can actually bump that up and coat it as an intermediate laceration instead of a simple single layer laceration, in case you didn't know that. That's one of those little word sentences that's in between coating one section and intigmatary to the another section. So if you didn't know that, that is there, and it's probably going to be asked on your CPC exam. More eye modifiers. Um, hearing test with a child will be in the medicine section in the back of the book. C-section at 36 weeks. Membrane issue, no complication. Know your otomies, ectomies, and OSIS, meningitis. What connects bones together? Is it the tendons? Is it muscle? What is it? What holds all that together? What entity determines something and about how to pay for Medicare Part B? Are we talking about OPPS and some of those other entities that goes along with those? We have a budget program for Medicare Part B, the NCD, the APM, MIPS, and LCD. Be sure you understand some of those. Just write the definitions in the front of your CPT book beforehand. The endocrine disease are either crushing, Addison's, Graves, or all of the above. AAPC loves the answer to be all of the above, by the way, or none of the above. Um, can you just simply turn off your screen and walk away from your computer when you are um, at work? Or do you actually need to log off and log back on? What could be abuse or fraud or an issue there? COPD, you've got pneumonia, you've got upper respiratory, biopsies, burns, catheterizations, stereo, and mammograms. A lot of them will say patient has a family history of this and blah, blah, blah. But she was really just there for screening. Don't let them convince you that it's going to be diagnostic when it's just screening. Um, bone density studies. I found a new code for a composition study, which will do the water weight, bone weight, and some other things. Um, it's in my last um, live that I did um, on YouTube. So go look, check that out if you want to know what some of that stuff is super neat. Um, pacemakers, debridement, dilations, that one I can't say. I'm with the kids and yep, your analysis is that that's the entire list that I have gone over all 26 pages tonight. Woo. That was a lot. Any questions? I'm here. I'm just looking up some data and glaring at my son. What is the difference between radiation therapy and radiation management? Well, Timber, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about other than ordering a continuation, a series of radiation treatments and we are going to be treating the patient and we order a series of them and then that way it's only one code for up to seven treatments. They have another code for just one to two codes for the treatment, but 
it's not like an add-on code. It's for the entire cycle. If you're only going to radiate a patient for one to two times, then that's the code you use. If you're going to do three or more, there's another code for it. Turn the volume down, baby. Sorry. Um, and then, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. And, and I don't think that AAPC is going to be asking about the differences between those. I haven't gotten feedback saying that we have that issue on our exam. So my speciality is prepping you for the exam exclusively and not in reality teaching you everything there is to know about every single code and issue with medical coding. But I can research it and I can figure it out for sure. I'm working on the 2022 codes, um, things that I will be fixing from last year to this year are instead of just highlighting what is needed in the code, I'm going to write down what the differences are here. Like this block is just the fine needle biopsy. There's no guidance whatsoever, no none whatsoever. The next section is all ultrasound. These two are just for ultrasounds, right? Now our next section is going to end up being, I think the ones with the fluoroscope. This one's going to be fluoroscope. Then we have another section with another radiology thing on the next page. But what modifiers to use and what modifiers to not use. So if the code absolutely has this lovely little plus sign right there in front of it, you cannot write use modifier 50 or 51 with that. And I don't know what I should do, if I should write that on every single one of the plus codes or will y'all eventually get all this. But um, I need to find a way. We need to make sure that everybody knows no 50 and no 51. But if I go through the entire book and write all that, it so be it. It just happens but that way everybody knows not to use those modifiers on all those plus codes in the entire book you're going to be doing your times and what I wrote on this other page it's the other book because I, that's the old book on the new book What I was writing was, instead of that, I was just writing times. But I don't know if that's helpful enough either, because my chicken scratch is a nightmare anyway. Times, these are the ones that you do the times table on, and you don't do. And if you can't bill for no billing images and no... Wonder if I needed to write it over here too. No 50 and no oh, 51. But y'all's input would be helpful too on um, what should be added, what should be self explanatory. I don't know. I wrote it all up on the side here, but should I go through the book and write it beside the code too? Um, because that's a lot of codes to remember. You be sure and note that you're um, what to use the codes with, what to not use the codes with, because I guarantee you AAPC is going to have this code with one of these as one of your possible answers. And if you don't look down here and note that you can't use those two together, then um, it's going to be bad. Um, this is all pretty visual, I'm sure. This is all ultrasound. This is no guidance whatsoever. No, no radiology, no nothing. You can't bill any imaging with it either. You don't bill any imaging with it. It comes with ultrasound. This one right here, you don't bill any imaging. And this comes with fluoroscope. The other side is going to be the same thing. This is the second fluoroscope up here. You don't bill imaging with it. Right here, this is the CT part. This is fine needle aspiration with all CT. 
and it's just based off your first and your each. So you do your times table. Um, and then this is all your MR guidance. And you do your times table. You don't build imaging with it. But you don't need to know it's fine needle aspiration. I don't need to write that in here like it was last time. You know this is fine needle aspiration. The main differences are is the CT guidance, the fluoroscope guidance, your MRI guidance. That's what's the difference in these. The ultrasound guidance and no guidance whatsoever. So, I don't know. I don't know what one Still playing around with what I'm going to be doing for next year. I've been typing all the sections, but it's taking me way too long. I've had the book since September, and I've only done ICD-10 guidelines, E&M, and I still have seven pages left to do an anesthesia, and I've been on that for two months. But I can do one of these pages in five minutes um, here at the house, adding more notes than anybody ever wants. And, and I have three examples here. So, I hate writing it all again because people complain about it, my handwriting and not being able to read it. But, you're just going to have to complain, I guess. I don't know. I can't type it fast enough <clears throat> to get it out. Plus, do all the formatting that I like to do with it and get it all out fast enough. This is my anesthesia. Where is it at? It's super nice though, y'all. I wish I could do every section. Maybe I could do a couple of sections each year, but doing the entire book all by myself is super hard. Um, it's got every CPT code listed, what you need to have highlighted in the CPT code, and then I've given you examples of how to code it what not to code with it. Um, it's going to be really, really nice when I finish it. But all the formatting and then all the examples is just, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I could spend forever on all this and never be done because <laughs> I love to audit myself. But I've listed all the modifiers down for you all in one page. It will be really nice when I finish it. But I think I'm just going to have to resort to doing a couple of chapters each year. I'll eventually get it all typed, but um, with all the mentoring that people are needing from me and the kids and everything else, it's easier just to update the page and take pictures and turn the pictures into PDFs, but the PDFs can turn out blurry in the corners. If you look at my picture I did last night of that page where was I at see this picture is a perfectly clear picture of what I did but you can see that the quality is not as good as the original book of course and look how blurry that one little corner gets why I don't know why because it's clearly written I didn't change the um, picture or draw anything deeper it was drawn that crazy deep when I did it um, I don't know why it just faded out and didn't capture those particular words on the picture that I turned into a, a PDF last night nothing will be as nice as the original and people I understand their complaints um, but I am trying to do the best I can of course for sure for everybody um, it's just time consuming so incredibly time consuming for sure all right I've already talked for two hours I know y'all want some process of elimination right something let me bring up something real quick while y'all are staring at my screen let's see I did some of these today there's our critical care. I did that one on a TikTok today, so I won't do that one right now. Let's do this one. I like these. Okay. E and M. Come on. There we 
we go. So for process of elimination, does anybody know which two we'll keep and which ones we might throw away? Get my book and move this. Hey, Chloe, you coming to come see me? Look at that. Look at that book. Yeah, yeah. Let's turn to our E and M section again. Oh my God. Keep A and D. Andy, oh my lord, come on. No, I like all the fives. Sorry, I'm making y'all drunk. Come on. I had it focused and then... There we go. So, we know the O5 is a new patient, right? That's a new patient. Ooh, I can't draw with nothing, right? So we know this is a new patient. That's new. We know this one is an established patient. And based off those levels, we have high stuff is going on. That's an 05 and that's a 15. The 45 and the 55, do we know what those are real quick? I'm going to check and see. What is A and D? Uh, two, four, five. Where's two, four, five? I'm telling. It's probably out of sequence. And by the way, if you have not fixed all your out of sequence codes in your book, oh Lord, you really need to do that before your exam. Go through all the codes in this book that are out of sequence and put them back where they go, or at least make note of where they are. So, this is an office consultation, 4-5, and 5-5, five, five, what is that, inpatient consultation, probably, 9-9, 2-5-5, -5. where's 2-5-5? Five, five? Mm. 2-4-4, 2-5-5, inpatient inpatient consultation. So they're wanting us to pick whether this is a new patient, regular office visit, or would we be doing a consult, no matter where the patient is at. Ugh, there we go. So let's go up here and check out and see what's going on with our question. So here's our question. He is a they're saying established right here, but that may not make a difference if they're doing a consultation. He decides to get a second opinion. Who is he? Who decided? On oh, sorry, I'm shaking. He he told he had a diabetic, but he decided and went to go see Dr. Myers. It sounds like the patient directed himself, right, to do a second opinion. What's our guideline for that? Can we do um, a consult either, even if they were, uh, we know he's not inpatient, but can we do either one of those? We can't. He would only get the, the um, new patient code for a regular office visit because the patient self-directed himself. That's the only answer it could be. Just because the patient wanted a consult and he did schedule a consult with the new doctor and that doctor did accept him and do a consult for him, he still doesn't get the consult payment because it has to be physician to physician. That's the only way you ever get the consult cold. And I guarantee you will have some examples just like this for the CPC exam. So be sure you understand to look for things, not necessarily some of their key terms they may use in here and throw in here as propaganda, but understand the facts that are going on in your little scenario by trying not to read too much of this. 
look for keywords. I was looking for opinion. Um, I found the word second opinion. And then I had to read a little bit about what was going on before it and a little bit afterwards to realize that he self-referred himself. Let me find you another code, another one real quick. Don't want you seeing the answers just in case. Ooh, this is a good one. I get these numbers. Ugh. Can we do any process of elimination here? Five, six, seven, and eight. No, we're just going to start with number one and work our way down, right? That's what I would do. So I'd run to 94485. Let's see, 99485. Good Lord. I don't know where none of these codes are at. 485. They're probably all going to be out of sequence. 85. What header are we in? We're under new patient risk assessment, right? 486 is risk, but it's different age. 87 is new patient risk. And then what's 88? What the heck is 88? I have no idea where 88 is at. Does anybody else know? I don't even know if that's a code. Is that a code? Nope. <laughs> well, we'll eliminate 88. So what do we need to know for 5, 6, and 7? All we need to know since they're risk is... Nope, I'm in the wrong section. We're in the 3s. I need to be in the 4s, right? I knew this was too easy. Where is 844.85? There we go. Right here, we've got 85. What header am I under? We're under critical care. We love critical care because we can go to our chart, right, and figure out how much time. Sometimes we can do that kind of stuff. We've got these two codes, though, are for something special. My notes have, this one will do, it says 30 minutes, and we're under 99485. It's for critical care for transportation of a patient, but it will actually do four, 16 minutes to 45 minutes because you can't bill immediately after the 30 minutes, the extra 30 minutes, until 15 more minutes at least have passed. So you can't transition to the 86 because of that. What I need to know is the time on this one to see if we're in the right spot. So I'm going to go up here and make sure that there's no adding that I needed to do. Sometimes they'll list a time, but then they'll say that they did a 15-minute something or another up somewhere else. But I don't see any more. I'll be in the shower. I said no. You already had one today. So we do just just the 30 minutes. Luckily, we didn't have any extra ad time to, to meddle with. So this one is particularly not too bad. That is for our two-way trans communication. They did 30 minutes just for the transport of that patient. Not too bad. I like these codes, and you might want to, which will I'll add for my new um, book notes, and I probably have, is to add transport right there, or transportation, something like that. We've got another set. Hopefully, here's these three codes that I was thinking that we were going to be running into, right? So we've got the 392 and the 302. So we've got a new patient here. We've got a wellness code right here. I'm not writing again. Good gracious. We've got the wellness code. We've got a new patient code. Right here is one of our wellness codes, and one of these is our wellness code. One of them's new patient, one of them's established. I think this one's established and this one's new. We'll see. But we need to see what's going on with our patient to see what's going on. And what is going on with those eight fives, three eight fives? Yeah, the 385, 
is for the new patient, right? Would you do a new patient code with an established patient code? They're actually using the correct modifier, but that looks wonky to me because the eights are all under new patient and then they're giving it a 99213. You can do an established visit, but it would end up being an 03 if it was because they were a new patient that day. Anyway, I would eliminate that for sure. Let's go up and see what our patient's here for. And they are three and they're here for a wellness exam. Risk factors were talked about. I don't see anything else being done. They didn't remove like skin tags. They didn't do some extra separate procedure at all. All I'm seeing is the wellness by age. So he definitely wouldn't be a 9-2 because he's a new patient, right? They said he was new. Yep, new patient. So he's not the 9s. And he won't be a regular office visit because He's here for risk assessment. These are the only risk codes that we have, which are back here on page 47 of the 2021 book, if you're in that. They have a new patients listed there, and then they've got the established patients there. And you can see them with a regular office visit with that modifier, but you need to do two distinct separate office visits, like a well child exam and sutures on a leg. Um, something totally different that wouldn't be included in a well child exam. Here's an anesthesia one. And remember that I talked about our 99100 code would be used for under one year or over 70. Now, for process of elimination, which two are we keeping and which two are we getting rid of? Anybody want to take a guess? I got 14 in here. Keeping C and D, Sarah says. Anybody else agree? So we'll get rid of A and we'll get rid of B. Now one thing that I do see a lot of times guys with AAPC, are you listening? The next step is usually one of my keeper codes is in one of my throwaway codes that gives me a hint as to which answer is correct. I see this more often than not that this might be our code, guys, because it has one of the throwaway codes in it. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but there it is. If I was in a hurry and I had no time, I would pick D and move on to the next question. Let's go see what's going on with these two CPT codes. And I think that's, let's see, 00140. We always look at their codes first. And 140 and 142. Is there an age listed? There is no age listed. So we know we are going to have to add that code because no age is listed. What it looks like when there is an age listed is a code like this, the 00320. It has an age listed in the code description. So this one, if you did a six monther, a 10 monther, an 11 monther, you would add, not add any code to this because it's in the descriptor. This one does not have any age listed. So you do have to add it on your older patients. Let's go up and see, or younger patients, Let's go see what the age of the patient is. She is 77 years old. That's all I needed to read from this question, and I can pick out the correct answer. It doesn't matter what comes anything else. 
this one doesn't have the O, one, one, the O, <laughs> O in it. So the one O, O in it. So I know I can't use that one either. Definitely wouldn't be a new patient. Anesthesia does not bill any 99 codes. And you never see anything coded before anesthesia. So even just the directions of B are wrong. You wouldn't bill a 66 before you bill the anesthesia. Just totally wrong. And you don't do an ENM visit with an anesthesia. That's totally wrong. So even if you wanted to just blah, it would never be something like that anyway. Uh, let's see. How about this one? What service can you report in addition to general eye services or evaluation and management? What can you code with it? One thing I can tell you about AAPC, sometimes and a lot of times, the word only or never not always, but you know, like 60% of the time, that means that's not the answer. Because there's never really any big, clear definites in coding like that. Only do this, only do that. How many times have y'all read that guideline in OB? It trumps all of our other sections in the CPT book. Well, it doesn't if they're there for a fractured leg or they're there for symptoms for HIV, it doesn't trump all the sections. It just only trumps the sections if they're being seen for OB. <laughs> it doesn't do what it says it does. Anyway, so with that in mind, it would only be A or B. So the question is, what service can you report in addition to general ophthalmology services or evaluation management services? Is it intermediate services or special services? What do y'all think? If I got rid of these two things for you. Anybody care to, to try that one? It's specialty services, so they can bill specialty services with it. Yep, B is correct, Sarah. Good job. Good job. All right. Let's see. Here's a good Medicare one, by the way. So let's check out these codes. Number one, what can two answers cannot be correct, by the way? Do you know which answers are completely wrong just by looking at the codes? Not by process of elimination, but by looking at the code sets, which two are wrong? That would be A and C. You don't want to code your annual wellness code right here with a regular office visit for Medicare. They ain't going to like it. They're going to kick it out. Not going to like it. So you know your answer is either going to be this Medicare code only or a regular office visit for Medicare patients, right? So we're going to go up here and look at our test question real quick. The patient's supposed to have been here for an annual wellness exam with an established E&M visit. Um, they did a history in the exam, and the MDM was low, and the chief complaint for the day was just their reflux and their hypertension. What do you do for a Medicare patient who says they're here for their reflux and their hypertension? How would you code them for that day?
and we've eliminated these two because they're wrong. It would be just your regular office visit. That annual wellness code can't be for anything else other than just the wellness exam. It's what AAPC wants you to do with it, so be sure and note that anything like this where it says they're being seen for regular and low MDM, that they're just here for a regular office visit. These AWVs for their annual is supposed to be their initial visit welcoming into the Medicare system. They're supposed to get like neurological exam where they draw a clock on a piece of paper. They want they fold it for the doctor. They follow all these directions. They get a depression screening, hearing and vision test. There's a whole wellness thing that they're supposed to be getting that would be way more involved. They would review all their systems, all 10 to 12, whatever systems it is, heart, lung, ears. They would look at their feet, um, all kinds of stuff. They would look at everything. They'd get their prostate exam. They would get their um, manual uh, breast exam for their lumps and stuff. They would get their toes looked at. Everything would be looked at. So, um, that's a big involved visit, and if they're not doing it, don't code it. For sure. For sure. Let's see. Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, I got a good one here. Another consultation one. So this one right here. So giving you a hint already. that we are in the consultation area. So what does our modifier 32 mean? 32 makes me curious because I don't see that very often. So when I look it up, it says it's mandated service. So I'm like, what? Who would mandate something? So that again makes me curious. And before I look up any CPT codes, what I did was I went up and looked up here and looked to see what was going on. And it looks like the insurance company requires a second opinion. So because this has been mandated by the insurance company, what code can you code? What have y'all learned tonight? Would we bother looking up any of these 42s, 43, and 53? Would we care what they are? Sorry, I missed some of the chat. Yep, mandated starts. Hey, Ange, how's it going? It's good to see you. No, we wouldn't care about what none of those other codes are, and they're pretty much leading us in that area, and process of elimination would probably have you get rid of the correct answer, right? So this is one of our 1% that would be our outlier is our answer. Um, just know when you see any of these new patient versus established patients, the 213s or something like that, that it could be interesting, you know, and especially seeing that modifier 32, that's an, un, I don't see that very often, even in the price exam questions. So mandated service made me curious. So instead of even doing a CPT code book lookup, I just went to the question, looked at the last sentence, didn't even look at the top. I just noticed in the last sentence that the insurance company was requiring this that eliminates anything else I needed to have done and I got rid of all these and just gave them the regular new patient visit it could be and move on to the next question super easy don't forget when you see something out of the ordinary you can you can get curious you don't have to follow my rules a hundred percent of the time and just do the process of elimination um, which would have gotten you down to just the 42 and the 43 and you might have mistaken this question you can have an open mind realize what some of these codes 
or some of these modifiers might be leading you to, if it's something different that we haven't been seeing a lot of, go on and let your curiosity lead you in the right direction, which it would be, it would be just ooh, regular office visit. I'm done. Move on. Just so you know. I still want my voice in your ear going, stop coding, stop coding. Don't let that keep going. Yeah. All right. Process of elimination, of course, with this one is going to get rid of C and D, right? We know the patients here for chemotherapy, right? Because we're doing our Z51. If you've watched any of my lives, you know that that is the code for either the getting radiation, chemotherapy, or immunotherapy for the cancer. That's why they're there. So we need to know if we're going to do another Z code with it or a C code. Now, if they're here getting treatment for cancer, getting chemo, immunotherapy, or radiation, would you do another Z code? Think about these codes logically. Would I do history of? Because that's normally what this is. Or it's a wellness exam, a Z code is. Or it's family history. Or their history of. You can't give chemo to somebody who has a history of. So just looking at these, I would pick A and move on to my next question without even looking up there because nothing else is making sense here. I definitely wouldn't code the 51 after the fact. I'm not going to code just a history of. Um, process of elimination gets rid of these two anyway. It's just knowing what to do in certain situations that makes any sense whatsoever um, can get you to where you can answer these questions without even looking up there to see what's going on. Just knowing a little bit about some of these codes and what would go together and not go together can help you tremendously knowing exactly what the answer is without doing anything. See? Love it, love it. Love it when that happens. It's not always going to happen, but it's enough. We all know if you ever see this question, what is considered a new patient? It isn't anything to do with one physician being in a group and seeing them or not seeing them. The only thing that matters to them being a new patient is three years. If you ever see this question, Nothing else matters to you in the world but the number three. Anything. What is the reason for somebody being a new patient? Look always for the number three. Wherever it is, that's your answer and move on. Got it? Got it. <laughs> Let's see. This is a cool question. I've not seen one of these um, before. Okay. Chief complaint, history, exam, and total length of the visit. Process of elimination, I can't really think of anything to get rid of. Uh, yeah, no, I have no clue. So I'm going to go up here, look at my question. <clears throat> and my last sentence, which I like to read first, says, Which piece of documentation is missing from this code, from this description so great I gotta read the whole thing so now that we've saved all this time by not reading questions I've got a little bit more inform time where I can sit here and read so it says the physician's office note states that counseling visit 15 minutes counseling and follow-up in the patients newly diagnosed with diabetes if the physician Reports code 99214, which piece of documentation is missing? So we did 15 minutes of counseling, and it was a follow-up with a new diagnosis of diabetes, and he did a 99214. How much time was 99214 supposed to be? Who was that? Was that Grandma coming in? Oh, she okay? Yeah, I'm good. 
9214. Time is 30 to 39. John won't even eat his, so get get plenty more. Um, 30 to 39, and we only have 15 minutes. So what did they forget to add? Baby, you're going to have to wait till I get off my life. They forgot to add in. It wasn't chief complaint, really, I don't think, and it wasn't history. The exam, possibly. But, yeah, total length time of the visit. You know how doctors write commonly. I saw the patient for 30 minutes and 15 minutes of that was counseling. They're supposed to say that kind of stuff, but all they did was report their counseling part of it, and the 15 minutes they did, they forgot to report the total time of the visit, and then you state how much time of it was spent counseling the patient. So D is the right answer. It's just one of the ones I haven't seen in a long time or ever, so that was a cool question. All right, guys, I have been on here a really long time. It's over not it's 9 p.m. here, and my kids are going crazy hungry, so I've got to feed them. What are you studying, Monica? I am studying for the CPC exam. I am teaching people how to pass their medical coding certification through the AMA, or AAPC, I mean, and um, I am training them on the process of elimination. I'm also teaching them how to prep their books for that exam and noting and trying to teach people how to look at the CPT codes or whatever set of codes they've been given in the answer and look for irregularities so that they can eliminate answers to get their chances down better to either picking out the answer completely um, Without even looking, this one we did without even looking at the question, just because of all the ICD-10 irregularities that they had in these options. So that's what we're doing. And there is a link in bio to everything. If you need me, there's an email there. There's the links to my notes. And I hope to see everybody in my little study group in messenger because that's where the real fun learning happens every single day so if you need real help and you're ready thank you coupon cutie you're awesome if you need help and you're getting ready to take your cpc or medical coding exam then come join us and i hope this has been helpful and i really hope tiktok recorded this so we can post this up on youtube as a repeat live because this was like almost three hours guys i still don't have any books i'm a newbie should i buy the cpt 2022 books oh see the test is going to be redone in 2022 too so if you can and you can afford them don't buy a course stop it travis no you are going to buy your 2022 CPT book, but your ICD-10 and your HIPPIX books can be 2021. Separate out your packages like that. Just update your CPT. Get the old study guide, even if it's from 2019 or something from AAPC. You can find them on eBay, McCary, Poshmark. People sell all kinds of stuff everywhere. Find an old study guide from AAPC, the official study guide from AAPC. No. Tomorrow. Sorry, I'm yelling at my kid. Then um, you can self-study yourself. Just to pass the exam, I'll teach you how. For sure. Just do the CPT book if you can in the 2022 version and get the other ones in 2021 on cheaper sites. For sure. I hope that's helpful, and I will see y'all again on Monday night for another live. If you if it's an emergency and you need tutoring before Christmas, harass me for it, please. I've shut down my tutoring um, 
appointment setting on the on the website but if you need it I'll network with you and work with you to schedule that on the site um, and open it up for you once we pick a time and everything um, it's just crazy right now with Christmas and the boys are home with me 24 7 and as you can tell I can't do anything with these guys around me so <laughs> anyway I love y'all I hope this has been helpful and I will see y'all in chat good night